We're going to get stuck right into things, no long preamble. I would love you underneath your heading to have a kite and a rhombus drawn. And your initial thought might be, why are we dealing with these two quadrilaterals together? We've looked at, so far, squares, rectangles, triangles, parallelograms. What did we look at most recently? Do you remember? Yesterday we looked at trapeziums. Thank you very much. Um, why would we do kites and rhombuses at the same time? Any suggestions? They're kind of the same. We, I'm going to agree with you there. Do you remember yesterday we looked at this idea that every area formula is interconnected? Come in, grab a seat, boys. Every area formula is related to every other one. Some of the connections are more obvious than others. The kind of the rhombus we're going to deal with together, because, excuse me, they each share a property which results in the same formula. And you'll see why in a second. So, when you take a kite or a rhombus, just draw it up. Remember, the key feature of a kite is that you've got these two sides being the same, adjacent sides being equal in length, and these two also being equal. If you took those two pairs and made them equal to each other, then you'd end up with a rhombus. All four sides are equal in length. What I'd like us to do is to draw the diagonals of these two shapes. Can we please draw the diagonals of these two shapes? Now, if you have actually used a ruler and you've drawn your kite, it's actually a kite like you've measured out, you've drawn your rhombus, it's actually a rhombus, every side matches, then when you draw your diagonals, you cannot help but notice that the diagonals have this nice peculiar relationship with each other. They meet at a certain angle. Can anyone tell me what that angle is? Say hello. It's 90 degrees, right? So we would say these diagonals are, what's the word when two things are 90 degrees? Yeah, hello. Perpendicular, thank you very much. Can you please indicate for me, this is perpendicular and this is perpendicular, okay? So we've got our right angles. Now, remember when we had a look yesterday, you can take a shape like a trapezium and you can cut it up, you can rearrange it so that you get a shape uh, that's easier to calculate. We're gonna do the same thing here, we're going to do it twice. Have a look over here, let's look at the kite, right? Do you notice the kite has a kind of symmetry? Do you see that? It's symmetrical, like these guys are the same and these guys are the same, right? So what I want you to, if you can, if you've got another color, that would be enormously helpful. What I'd like you to shade in with me is that these four triangles here are not actually four triangles, it's two triangles done twice. See this guy over here? I'm gonna shade this one up the top in red. This red triangle is identical to this red triangle. Can you see that? They're just mirror images of each other. And it's the same deal with the ones on the bottom. These two triangles here are equal to these two triangles here. Now we have a fancy name for this, which we're going to deal with a little more next year, but I'm gonna tell you what the word is now so that in 12 months time you're like, ooh, remember that thing Mr. Wu said? When these triangles are the same in every single way, they're the same size, same dimensions, all that, we call them congruent. Congruent, it's a bit of a, funny kind of word. Here's how you spell it. C-O-N-G-R-U-E-N-T. They're congruent, identical in every way, including their area. So what we can do is, if you'd like, just eyes up for a second and watch this part. You can then go back to um, doing your own drawing. Imagine taking this red triangle here and ripping it off and then spinning it around so it fit over here. Can you see it would fit in nicely on that corner? Can you do that? You can do it on your own, and you can match it with this orange one down the bottom. I could take this left-hand triangle, sort of rip it off, and then spin it around so it fits over here. Okay, so now, having moved this shape over here, I'm just going to do my very best with this poster. Perfect, okay. What shape is that? Rectangle. That's a rectangle, right? All we need is its base and its height and we're there, okay? So in a kite or in a, ooh, where'd my black one go? Here it is. Or in a rhombus, we usually call these uh, two diagonals X and Y. So if I put an X all the way across there and a Y which goes all the way up and down, 
what is the height of the rectangle that we've drawn? Not a rhetorical question, it's just very straightforward. The new rectangle on the right hand side, how tall is it? Have a look. Hmm. Krishan, what do you see? Um, ah, okay, so you've already gone to the next step, haven't you? The height is y. Where did you get, where did Krishan get half of x from? Where is that? Hyang, where do you see it? Uh, because you see the diagonal. Yeah. Because you took off that piece and the other piece. So yep. Half of what it is. Very good. So we've got this rectangle, it's half, uh, sorry, it's y all the way from the top to the bottom. And then when you have a look at this rectangle, it's half as wide as the original kite we started with. So what's the area of this kite? It's the same as the area of that rectangle. Base times height, it's going to be half, half x times y. We could just write it as half xy, or even xy on two, if you wanted to not write the one, you want to be super, super lazy. Um, now, when you have a look, hopefully you can see Everything that we said over here, and I'm going to ask you to, um, to shade this in just the same. Everything we said over here about the kite is also true of the rhombus. You've still got the same congruent shapes, the identical triangles up the top. You could do the same flip around, same down the bottom. You could just flip it around. And in fact, this area formula, so long as you know the lengths of those diagonals, it works not just for the kite, but also for the rhombus. Exactly the same deal because we can do the same rearrangement. So I'm just going to finish coloring in the appropriate rectangles. Now, yeah, this is an interesting thing, right? Because we made the top and the bottom equivalent to each other, not only are these two triangles equal to each other, these two are as well, right? So you could, you just get four rectangles. Uh, Four rectangles? No, four triangles makes two rectangles all together and it would be the same.